Hello, and welcome to my podcast, Why the Book Wins, where I compare books with their movie adaptations, and through these discussions, you will learn why the majority of the time, the book wins. Having said that, I am a huge movie buff, and do give unbiased reviews for both the book and the movie, ultimately. So whether you love books, movies, or both, this is the perfect podcast for you. This probably goes without saying, but there will be spoilers for both the book and the movie in this episode, so if you plan on reading the book or watching the movie, go do that first, and then come back and listen to this. And now, without further ado, let's get right into it. Hi, thanks for listening to today's episode. We are talking about the book Child 44, written by Tom Rob Smith, published in 2008, And then the movie Child 44, directed by Daniel Espinosa, was released in 2015. So a quick synopsis. We have Leo, who is a security officer for Russia in the early 1950s. However, when he is asked to denounce his wife but refuses, he is demoted to the militia and sent to a smaller town. While there, he tries to solve a series of murders with the help of his wife and his militia commander. As he tracks down the killer, he learns even more the error of his ways when he was just blindly following the Soviet leadership. And in the end, he finds the killer, who happens to be his long-lost brother. And the brother is killed, and Leo returns to Moscow and is made head of the new homicide department. My thoughts on the book. Prior to starting this book, I was having one of those weeks where I would pick up a book, read a few pages, maybe even a chapter, but I just couldn't stick with anything. This was like the third or fourth book I had tried, and I was immediately grabbed by the opening paragraph. The first few sentences read, Since Maria had decided to die, her cat would have to fend for itself. She'd already cared for it far beyond the point where keeping a pet made any sense. Rats and mice had long since been trapped and eaten by the villagers. Domestic animals had disappeared shortly after. All except for one, this cat, her companion which she'd kept hidden. Why hadn't she killed it? She needed something to live for, something to protect and love, something to survive for. She made a promise to continue feeding it until the day she could no longer feed herself. That day was today. And from there, I had a hard time putting the book down. The first half or so deals with Leo and his wife, Raisa, living in Russia. And, you know, they're just dealing with him being a security officer and the different problems and politics going in at, during, at Russia at that time. And Leo also starts to find himself questioning the government he works for. At the halfway point, though, Leo has been stripped of his title and he and Raisa are transferred to this new city called Volsk. And from there, the book focuses on Leo with the help of others trying to solve these murders. Even though the book has the added intrigue of Leo being chased down by the government while he's trying to catch the murderer, it still lost my interest a bit when that became the focus. There were also some aspects of it I found kind of disturbing and hadn't been expecting, so I was just caught a bit off guard by that. I went into the book only knowing it took place in Russia, and that was all. But maybe had I read what this book was about, I could have been more prepared for the murders and I don't know, it wouldn't have felt like it took a disappointing turn because like I said, the beginning part, just like just living in Russia in the 1950s with Reza being married to a security officer, like that right there was just interesting in and of itself, but became a murder thing. Anyway, I did like the opening with the two brothers, Pavel and Andre. They're starving, and they find a cat, which they try to catch. After catching it, they separate to gather wood, and Pavel is then kidnapped, and Andre thinks he abandoned him. When we're brought to current day, initially, none of the characters are named Pavel or Andre. Andre. And so as you're reading, like you're wondering how Pavel and Andre will become part of this new story, and so that just made it really interesting and was a nice touch. On to the movie. So it is directed by Daniel Espinosa, who also directed Life and Safe House. The script was adapted by Richard Price, who has been a screenwriter since the 80s, and he's written many scripts and even a few novels. The movie was really well done, with solid acting and great cinematography. It is banned in Russia, which isn't too surprising. Books and movies like this make me grateful to live somewhere where we don't have a dictatorship or communism and we have freedom of speech, which I think people take that specifically like too much for granted. Because yeah, reading this book, like hearing what it was like back then in Russia, for a second I was like, is this like an alternate dystopian reality or is this really what it was like? And after reading about it, like it really was that bad. I heard about this movie when I covered the movie The Drop, which also stars Tom Hardy and Numi Rapace. They had been wanting to act in a movie together for a while and then they finally got to do so in The Drop 
And then Child 44 was released the following year. I'm surprised I hadn't watched it already because I love both Hardy and Rapace. And I don't know, somehow I just had never even heard of this movie until earlier this year. So with the acting, as I said, we have Tom Hardy, who is always excellent. He looks kind of sickly for a lot of this movie. And I like in the book, Leo is taking methamphetamines. And so I thought maybe they're making him look sick because he's on drugs and then later he gets off them. But they took that storyline out of the movie. So I don't know, maybe he just looks sickly because of all the stress he's under. Numi Replace plays Raisa, the wife. And again, she is excellent. I love watching movies with her because she's such a presence when she's on the screen. Gary Oldman is in the fairly small role of Nesterov, the officer who is skeptical of Leo, but eventually helps him to solve the murders. Joel Kinnaman is well cast as Leo's nemesis of sorts, Vasily. Which, by the way, in the book, it talks about how Vasily's dislike for Leo is personal, and it's said multiple times, and yet we never learn why he hates him so much. And I thought the ending, where all three are there, like some connection was going to come out between Vasily and the brothers and some big reveal, but there wasn't, so he just dies and you never know what he had against Leo. And then Patty Considine plays Vladimir the killer. He gives a good portrayal of a mentally unstable man. When I looked into Constantine, turns out he's been in several British comedies, including Hot Fuzz, which is a great one. He's also in The Death of Stalin, which will, which I will be covering. I've already actually done the podcast for it, and I will most likely post it next week, but I might hold off. I don't know, but that will probably be the next one. So on to the differences. I'll start with Pavel and Andre. So the book and movie both start during the 1933 Holodomor, and Wikipedia describes this event saying, Holodomor means to kill by starvation, also known as the terror famine and sometimes referred to as the great famine. And it was a famine in Soviet Ukraine from 1932 to 1933 that killed millions of Ukrainians. The term Holodomor emphasizes the famine's man-made and intentional aspects, such as rejection of outside aid, confiscation of all household foodstuffs, and restriction of population movement. As part of a wider Soviet famine of 1932 to 33, which affected the major grain producing areas of the country. Millions of inhabitants of Ukraine, the majority of whom were ethnic Ukrainians, died of starvation in a peacetime catastrophe unprecedented in the history of Ukraine. Since 2006, the Holomador has been recognized by Ukraine and 15 other countries as a genocide of the Ukrainian people carried out by the Soviet government. So the movie begins when this is happening and we have Leo as a teenager living in an orphanage, but then he runs away and he's adopted by a Soviet soldier. The book also starts during this time period, but it's a very different beginning. We have Pavel who finds a cat, which was talked about in that opening paragraph. And so he gathers what he needs to catch it. And his mom tells him to take his little brother Andre with him. Pavel is reluctant, but he agrees. And they do catch the cat, despite Andre almost messing it all up. Then Pavel is kidnapped by people who don't even realize he has a cat. They are just after him, specifically. Andre's mother is heartbroken because Pavel was her favorite son, and she tells Andre that he was taken and killed, though Andre thinks that he's still alive and that Pavel simply abandoned them. And the mom goes crazy and is very abusive to Andre. Pavel, though, even though he was kidnapped, he does not die. He ends up being adopted by the people who kidnap him. Despite their complicated way of meeting, it seems they have a close bond and a love for each other by the time we meet them when Pavel is now Leo and he's about 30 years old. Leo having this secret past and a brother is left out of the movie. This was a huge part of the book though because that's the reason Andre gives for having killed those kids because he wanted to get Leo's attention and get him to find Andre. Yeah, he wanted Leo to find him. In the movie, the killer knows who Leo is, but they have no connection and he wasn't trying to get Leo's attention or anything. So on to Vladimir slash Andre. In the book, Andre was based on the real killer Andre Chikatilo. The movie, for some reason, changes his name to Vladimir. I guess they couldn't make it obvious it was based on a real person for legal reasons or something. In both, we learned that he suffered abuse and was a German POW, which also caused trauma. The book has the added part of him feeling abandoned by Leo and trying to devise a way to get Leo to notice and find him. In the book, when Leo does find Andre, Andre has been expecting him and is very calm. Leo is taken aback by how calm he is, and they talk, and then Andre asks if they, like, if he wants to play a game of cards, which is something they did when they were kids. And while they're playing this card game, both Reza and Vasily, 
both Race and Vasily, enter the room, and long story short, Andre kills Vasily, then Leo kills Andre. And Andre has two daughters, and one of them witnesses the death of her father. In the movie, Leo finds Vladimir in the woods where they have a brief conversation. And while talking, Vasily approaches and shoots Vladimir. Then he fights with Leo and Reza, and they're able to kill Vasily. In both, Leo tells the officials that Vasily died a hero. The government says that Andre slash Vladimir was a government spy who was terrorizing the Soviets. Leo goes along with this and is able to form a homicide department in Moscow. In the movie, Leo is more hesitant to agree that Vladimir was a German spy because he obviously wasn't. But in the book, he just goes along with it and doesn't disagree because he knows that going along with this propaganda is the only way he will be allowed to set up a homicide department. Oh, and the way things are being run have changed a bit because Stalin died before Leo was even set to Volsk, that city. And so that's why he and Reza weren't killed in the first place and instead they were transferred to a different city is because people in the government, people in charge were all scrambling after Stalin died. And so, so that's why that happened. But the movie doesn't mention Stalin's death at all. But back to Andre's daughter, it seems the book kind of sets her up to come back in one of the sequels to this book because it says something about like there being hate in her eyes as she sees what happens. So it seems that she may grow up and want to seek revenge. We also learn more about her just in general throughout the book and her storyline was very interesting. And whenever we were like in one of her scenes, I was always, I felt like I was on the edge of my seat a lot of the time. And this is one of the things I like about the book. We see the point of views and internal dialogues of like every character, even the minor ones who aren't in much. And Andre's daughter is one we return to multiple times, and so we get a feel for who she is and how she thinks about her father. In the movie, we see Vladimir has at least one son, but not much is shown of him or in his family life. So on to Reza. The story with Reza is similar in both book and movie. However, the book goes more in depth into their relationship. Both talk about how she married him out of fear, and in the movie, you can see that by the end, she loves him. In the book, she like straight out says that she has fallen in love with him. And we just get to see their relationship blossom as they work together to solve these crimes. In the book, Reza also convinces Leo that their fellow Russian, Russian citizens will help them in their cause. And he's wary, but he agrees and Russia, Reza is proven right. And this was a nice touch, albeit a little cheesy sometimes. But that is how they were able to travel through these various cities to get to Ro Rostov, where Andre lives. And the book and movie have a scene where they're on the train and the book guards are sent to kill them. Whereas in the movie, like a guard pays a prisoner to kill them. But anyway, in the book, they rely on the help of the other passengers to assist them and to protect them, even though the passengers are risking their own lives by doing so. And their time on the train lasts much longer in the book and they have a bit more of like this elaborate escape from the train, whereas in the movie, they just jump off. We also learned that Reza is unable to have children because of injuries that happened during the war when she was raped by soldiers. Leo is struck by this when he hears it because he is aware that soldiers raped women, but he never thought about how that could have happened to Reza. He had been a war hero and had a picture from the war hanging in the house, and he now realizes what horrible things that photo represents for her. So just further showing his change of character. In both book and movie, there is also the story of Reza's teacher friend Ivan. She is in love with him, but they have never been intimate. In both, they visit him to get help when back in Moscow, and they find out that he was an agent all along. I really like this storyline, and when reading the book, I like totally did not see that coming, so that was a nice touch. So in the book, there is the first murder in Vol 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 Volsk, and it's pinned on a mentally handicapped 17-year-old named Barlam. Then there is a second murder done in an identical way, but they think it must have been done by a man who is secretly gay. And so they pinned these murders on someone outside the norm, like what was acceptable at the time, to prevent people from losing faith in the system, because they don't want them thinking like some normal person did it. Which of course, like people already have lost faith in the system and they're all living in fear. So the government is just kind of fooling themselves, I guess. Anyway, so they have the ticket master at the train station, Alexander, name any gay men in town. And so then they arrest all those men and they question them. And then they end up discovering a doctor who had propositioned a boy in the orphanage and the doctor ends up committing suicide before he can be tortured and interrogated. Alexander also commits suicide because he feels such guilt about turning in all those innocent men. In the movie, Varlam like isn't really in it at all. 
And then they also, in the movie, kind of make it seem like they suspect, like, quote-unquote suspect, Alexander killed the, the kid, but they still have him make the list of names anyway, even though they suspect him. So I thought that was kind of confusing, because... I don't know. Like, in the book, they just blackmailed him to create this list of names. Whereas in the movie, they have him make a list of names while also thinking that he's the killer. I don't know. But as I said, there are sequels to this book. So Child 44 is the first of three books that follow Leo and Ray says they solve crimes. In the following books, they also have their daughters that are involved in the story. Even though Smith is a talented writer... There were some things in this book that I found disturbing, and it makes me question if I would want to read the other two books. I know serial killer documentaries and shows are, and like things like that are super popular right now, but I just don't like learning about it, that. It's upsetting to learn what they put their victims through, and I am perfectly fine living life being totally unaware of the horrible things that can be done to a person. The book also has a disturbing scene when we get a flashback to when Leo was kidnapped by the people that later become his parents. And that scene just put a bad taste in my mouth. Pun intended, for those who know what I'm referring to, if you've read the book. Uh, So that, along with the serial killer aspect, were just too uncomfortable for me. And then the book or movie. In the end, despite my complaints with the book, I'm tempted to say that I still like it better. It was more intriguing, and having Leo and Andre be brothers was a nice touch. The movie is a bit less upsetting in some ways, but it still involves a serial killer who preys on children, so it's going to be upsetting regardless. But I think I'll stick with the book being the better of the two. As said, Smith really is a great writer and he's very detailed without dragging on and on. And there's great character development. And like I said, we even see, we see into like any character involved in the story, even if they're only involved shortly. And I, I liked that. The movie is a solid adaptation though. And they really did a good job including a lot from the book in the movie. The acting is also solid all the way around. I just wish they would have stuck with the Pavel and Andre storyline and that beginning chapter of the book. It was just such a great way to start the story, so I wish they would have included that in the movie. But I guess that wraps it up for Child 44. In the end, I wouldn't highly recommend either, ultimately. Like, I don't know. If you're a huge Tom Hardy fan or Numi Rapace or something, then, like, they do give great performances. But, yeah, I was just kind of meh on both of them. But it was interesting, like I said, the beginning of the book, just learning about what it was like to live in Russia at that time was just really interesting. And my next episode, like I said, will probably be The Death of Stalin, which is a graphic novel. So my first time covering a comic book and then it was turned into a comedy. So that's a fun one, like a kind of a dark comedy, but I will most likely likely be posting that next. If it's not next week, then it'll definitely be at some point down the road. But thanks for listening, and I'll see you next week. Thanks again for listening. If you want to find me on other platforms, you can check out my Facebook, so facebook.com slash why the book wins, or my Instagram, which is all one word, why the book wins, or you can go to my website, why the book wins.com. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can reach out to me on any of those. I also have a Buy Me A Coffee account where you can show your support by donating a couple bucks to the podcast. So that's buymeacoffee.com slash whythebookwins. But the fact that you are simply listening to the podcast means a lot to me and I really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe and follow and tune in next Wednesday for the latest episode of Why the Book Wins. 